So in today's third part of the video series, how to read the chart of nucleides, this video is only for people who either are really, really interested in nuclear chemistry, people who work in the industry and just want to refresh some of their knowledge, and for students who actually prepare to take a test on how to read the chart of nucleides. In today's video, we will discuss the following topics, such as the isomeric transitions and why are some of these tiles split vertically, what does the sigma mean that stands in some of these tiles, and even more different decay modes, such as the proton emission, the neutron emission, the cluster emission, and the spontaneous fission, such as, last but not least, the isobaric or chain yield. So let's get started. Isomeric states. If the tile isn't divided diagonally, but vertically, then the information always refers to different nuclear isomers. It should be noted that each nucleide has several nuclear isomers. The chart of nucleide only lists the more long-lived ones. The order of magnitude for long-lived is approximately 10 to the power of minus 22 seconds. Though you may find shorter-lived ones in the version of 2006. These nuclear isomers are abbreviated with M or G. On the right side the ground state is always meant and on the left side the so-called metastable state. Iridium 170M decays more than 50% via beta plus and less than 50% via alpha decay. Iridium 170 in the ground state only decays to less than 5% via alpha but up to a maximum of 95% via beta plus. There are also nucleides where several isomeric states are listed such as europium-152. Here states M2, M1 and G are listed. But back to the topic. The high energy M2 state transitions via isomeric transition emitting a 90 kilo electron volt gamma quantum to the M1 state. And this, like the ground state, can decay via beta minus to gadolinium 152 or via electron capture beta plus to samarium 152. The M1 state tends to favor the beta minus while the ground state tends to favor electron capture beta plus. Next topic. The sigma. This stands for the cross section for a specific nuclear reaction. If there is nothing specified as in chlorine 37, then it's always a cross section for an N gamma reaction with thermal neutrons. Take for example chlorine 35, the cross section is 43.7 barns or 8 times 10 to the power of minus 5 for an N alpha reaction or 0.44 for the capture of a neutron and a subsequent emission of a proton. Roughly speaking, a cross section of above one is a good cross section. So we have already covered the most challenging part of the video. For the sake of completeness, I want to introduce you the other different decay modes that exist. Especially in nuclei with a relatively high proton content in the nucleus, this leads to a proton emission. Unlike the beta plus, no conversion takes place. Instead, the proton is ejected from the nucleus as it is. During this decay, you move straight down through the chart of nucleides. The opposite of this is the neutron emission. Same game, just with a higher neutron content. Here too, the neutron is ejected without prior conversion from the nucleus. During a neutron emission, you move horizontally through the chart of nucleides. Then for the super heavy nuclei, there are two additional decay modes. Spontaneous fission, as the name suggests, the nucleus splits itself spontaneously, resulting in more than one doctor nucleus. Actually, in this case, fission products would be a better name. Since there is more than one daughter nucleus, there is no specific direction to move through the chart of nucleides during this process. And then there is the cluster emission, just like an alpha decay but on steroids. A larger nucleus is emitted from the decaying nucleus. From carbon-14 nuclei as radium-226 to neon-25 in the case of uranium-233, you will find a variety of them. You will find a variety of cluster emission ejectiles. This is never the primary decay mode and it usually has a probability of occurrence of up to 5%. Now onto the last topic, isobaric yield or chain yield. This describes the percentage of a given isobar as fission product for a fission 
of uranium-235 or plutonium-239. For uranium-235, it's always shown above the arrow. And in the case, if you fission plutonium-239, it's the number below the arrow. Typically, in fission, two fission products are obtained. And when uranium-235 is split, the 92 isobar is produced in 5.996% of all fissions. If you were to split plutonium-239, this isobar would be produced in 3.003% of all fissions. Notice for heavy isobars, you only have a fission yield for plutonium-239. If you actually understood what I said in this video, congrats, you can now claim that you can read the chart of nuclei at an advanced level and that you are prepared for taking a test on how to read a chart of nuclei, except if you come across an eye stop like americium 242. Good luck with that, you will have to watch the next video. A special thanks goes to the Working Group of Analytics and Fundamental Nuclear Chemistry from Dr. Eric Strupp and the Division of Nuclear Chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, goodbye.